It was a cloudy fall morning and a rush hour like any other. Then it happened. A catastrophic train crash just south of McCormick Place. Dozens of people commuting to work and school were killed. Hundreds of others were hurt. Survivors of the crash want the world to remember the lives lost and the heroism 50 years ago this Sunday. High school senior Lisa Clare had no reason to think anything unusual would happen when she boarded an Illinois Central train here in her Southside community. It was just a, a Monday routine, you know, going to work kind of day. Just another commute downtown to her job in a work study program. She was joined in the first car of the train by her friends Pat and Dean. Less than an hour later, Lisa and hundreds of others would be encased in metal amid anguished cries. By the time I came to consciousness, Pat and I came to consciousness about the same time, we just heard people screaming all around us and sobbing and it, it was it was like another world. Like we had no idea what had happened. On the morning of October 30th, 1972, one Illinois Central train overshot the 27th Street station and reversed. The train behind it, the train Lisa and her friends were on, came barreling down the tracks, its engineer unable to stop. The collision at 727 was massive. We were basically in two trains at this point. Our car telescoped the double-decker car and we were inside of it. So we, they had the, the work of removing all of the dead and injured from above us before they could even get to us. 350 were injured, 45 were killed. Among the dead, Lisa's friend, Dean. There was a measure of good fortune that day. Michael Reese Hospital, which is now closed, was less than 100 yards away. Doctors and nurses ran to the crash site and treated passengers right here. They um, gave us um, shot injections of morphine. Like they ripped open our coats and started giving us injections and then the rescue started. For six hours, Lisa was trapped in the wreckage before she was airlifted to Billings Hospital at the University of Chicago where she spent a month for multiple injuries. You didn't see any of these clippings until later? Didn't see any of them until I was home from the hospital. Photos of her in the hospital were published in dozens of newspapers. Texas, Vancouver. Were some, were some safeguards put in place right after that? DePaul University transportation expert, Joe Sweeterman. All kind of things have changed from that. New car designs uh, in the United States have something called a, a buff standard where you have have a collision and the cars essentially uh, keep their integrity, but they derail. They may sprawl over the right of way, but you don't have one uh, car riding up another. Along with GPS and better signaling. So this was my train ticket from that day. Lisa has a bond with others who survived the crash, including Louise Loari, who thinks of four of her five children born after October 1972. So there's that gratitude, uh, the joy of all the years we've had together, yeah. um, but always on top of that and immediately right after that is the realization of how many lives were lost, um, how many families mourned and grieved. Louise and Lisa are leading efforts to organize a memorial service at the First Unitarian Church on Sunday, the 50th anniversary of the worst train crash in Chicago's history. The city should not forget that this happened. The city should not forget that such a tragedy can happen. So we're grateful to be able to honor the people that we lost, the people we don't know, people we do know, and, and all the people that contributed to that day. There were so many. Lisa went on to become a mom and a photographer and work in public relations. She tells us every day since that crash, she's had pain. Imagine that, every day over 50 years. She said 12 surgeries and still needs two or three more operations. Marie, it's a reminder that even decades after a tragedy, survivors can still cope with an assortment of challenges. Sure, but uh, really impactful to hear for both women, especially for someone like me who did not know about this tragedy. Yeah. Lisa seemed really warm in, in speaking about it and, and engaging. No bitterness there. Yeah, upbeat, positive. Resilient, mm -hmm. yes. Focusing attention on this memorial service again. That's at the First Unitarian 
Church in Hyde Park, 3 o'clock Sunday afternoon, and she and Louise would like a permanent marker on the crash site to remember what happened sure. on that day. Well, thank you for sharing their story with mm -hmm. us.